I'm standing here in front of a rather unique concentrating solar mirror. Let me explain. It is a very lightweight inflated membrane fixed focus mirror. One of the optical segments which are framed by a special profile. Inside was engineered a rather unique uh, method to pre-stretch the film and then we blow a little bit air between a transparent and a reflective film and you see the result in the mirror. The different images of these segments are concentrating toward an aperture, a small hole where you have the highest density and the focus and then going into a cavity. Which is really unique is that we need nearly no material because we are working with one tenth of a millimeter of thickness of films and this is a very special material took long years to develop it's fluor polymer based with outstanding optical properties it's more transparent than glass over the whole spectrum specifically also for the uv radiation that we have not a full parabola we have an eccentric part of a parabola which is rotating around the hotspot. There where we have the concentration with a constant movement 15 degrees per hour and with this continuous adaptation uh, to the seasonal haze of the sun. I will show you something now. Taking a big stick of wood and just going a little bit in front, not exactly in the focus, but you see immediately uh, the energy is working. The real concentration takes place here. This is the diameter of the focus and I am standing now hypothetically in the room of the cavity. So all the lights coming in here. What can we do with this? Because this cavity is very well insulated and because it has only this small hole for losses, we can store energy. So what we have shown already, very simple things like heating stones on which we are producing pizzas. One big pizza less than one minute and pizza with this mirror for over 20 persons, no problem, even after midnight or the next morning. But of course, uh, the capacity to produce temperatures over 1000 degrees is for example shown here. This wonderful little symbol of Tamera made out of aluminum was molten in the focus of this mirror. And this shows one possible application in small settlements. You can make metal works. You can produce uh, ceramics. That's something which hadn't been possible up so far and you had always to use big industries. But the most important thing, storing solar energy. The most important task in this coming, in this beginning solar age. Because we have so much more sunshine, much more, 15,000 times more than we need, but discontinuous. Nighttime, bad weather periods and so on. Stand in front is a model that will be soon replaced by a real system built in Germany by the famous Max Planck Institutes in Mülheim Ruhr. It's a so-called thermochemical reversible reactor, we'll explain in short, and it will be coming to Tamera and will be put in the fixed focus to demonstrate that we can have 24 hour around the globe energy production with very high efficiencies. We have developed in the past over many years with Max Planck's systems. So what it is? Imagine in this container, in this box, cylindrical box, we have a metallic powder called magnesium. magnesium is plenty in the earth. 
In this, we have another metallic powder, a little bit more rare, but also blended floor existing. You see a connecting pipe of this closed system. It means it is once filled in, and now it starts a solar ping pong game. I start explaining, because there's a third element in, it is hydrogen gas. Per kilogram of magnesium, we have about 70 gram of hydrogen gas under pressure we put initially in. And when this hydrogen is adsorbed by the magnesium, it's creating in an isothermal way heat. If we go with 120 bars initially in, we will have 500, about 500 degrees centigrade heat deployment when the gas flows in here. And uh, it will stay, that's why it is isothermal, it always at this temperature very exactly as long as this absorption takes place. This is evidently the case when we need energy in the nighttime because we unify hydrogen and magnesium. And now the daytime comes, our fixed focus mirror is heating up again the magnesium to 500 degrees and the gas is reversed, the thermal compressor, it's pushing into the low temperature hydride. In this low temperature hydride it's producing first a lot of hot water, 80 degrees, we can extract where for our house, for our settlement. We already had electricity here with Stirling engine or steam engine, whatever. Now comes the night, and that's a very exciting part. We have ambient temperatures, maybe in a cool case only around zero degree centigrade air, but for this low temperature hydride, this is already hot. So it extracts heat from the ambient, pushes back the hydrogen, nighttime, and again, we have the same heat. If we dimension the right way, we have 24 hour constant heat here. And because we extract from the environment air, which is considered by the system as hot, we are going strongly below zero degree centigrade. So we are producing cooling. This system produces process heat, energy to convert mainly to electricity or to mechanical energy, domestic hot water and cooling. Exactly what you need. So bringing this together offers the real opportunity to have autonomous 24 hours running solar stations in all dimensions, starting small, like a mirror here, so having bigger mirrors, having series of mirrors, combining them, you can become autonomous in your village, in your settlement, and not only for electricity, but also for heat and cooling. And if you look how much energy of the sun coming from the mirror is converted to these three qualities of energy, you are astonished it's more than 100% because this is a heat pump process. It's a thermochemical heat pump. And the materials are no, don't cost much. Magnesium costs less than five euros per kilogram. It lasts eternally. Hydrogen, once brought in, system must be, of course, tight to hydrogen. Uh, it's nothing. And the low temperature hydride is nearly the same. So what we are, what I try to describe is a ping pong game between the heat of the sun, daytime, pushing hydrogen here, the cold of the cold of the night pushing it back, all by producing the energies I told you about. Those mirrors at very low cost, very high precision, and forming itself by the pressure of air, which makes it possible that step by step it is also going into countries having not high technology to produce high uh, sophisticated optics, but this is doing. Then I explained shortly what we can do from cooking over process heat, and I got to the key problem 
of solar energy storage. At the moment, the world is thinking about storing electric energy with lithium ion batteries and uh, this is somewhat problematic because the materials lithium is limited because you need um, cobalt in batteries which is poisonous and this is not a real long time solution and on the other side only electricity is not a long time solution if you want to become independent in a settlement, what do we need? Electricity, mechanical power, heat and cooling. And I just explained you how we can do this with unpoisonous, abundant uh, materials which will last lifetime uh, in systems and much cheaper. And the overall efficiency not being like you have it in producing electricity uh, at the moment you are in the best case at 30 35 percent solar to electricity the overall system here has over 100 percent because it's a heat pump however uh, what we require here are high temperatures it's wonderful for countries in which you have a lot of direct radiation because then the mirrors function perfectly but of course we started thinking, couldn't we develop something for more cloudy regions? Couldn't we develop not something, a thermochemical reversible reaction, uh, which functions already at low temperatures and nevertheless produces high temperatures um, uh, for electricity production via thermoconverters? And we called this system the first one I said Maxell, and the second one we call it Aquacell, because the idea was to find two liquids acting in a thermodynamical way like hydrogen with a solid stuff, magnesium, but as liquids. And we found those liquids. And we are, this is still not as developed as the Maxell, it will take two years and we will be ready for this. But then we have two storage and both, again, materials we are looking for, non-poisonous, low cost, abundantly existing. This will give the real big chance to the sun uh, to produce what it is meant, local autonomy. At the moment, uh, this autonomy cannot be realized because we have no storage, long time storage. And uh, I forgot to mention that if uh, you bring the two elements together, hydrogen in this case and uh, magnesium, only then heat is produced. When they are separated, there are no losses. You can wait one year, 10 years, 20, and bring them together, you store the energy for all time. And the same holds true for the liquids, in the liquids, we have some other characteristics which are really exciting, we are working on. For example, they will give us possibility to extract even in arid zones, meaning in deserts, out of the air, any quantity of fresh water we want. Because there's still content, we need only how to do it. Okay, the typical problem in northern countries, if this is a year here, all the months is from winter, summer, winter. So we have typically solar energy like this, but the demand of energy, specifically in the cold countries, is something like this. So you, have, if we are able to shift this energy toward this place is, we are the winners. And that, I mean, the mankind is winner because we have to solve this problem. It's completely free of emissions, no CO2. And the climatic discussion is something which has to be taken very seriously. And there's only one solution, using the clean energy of the photons of the sun 
in systems which are clean themselves. And that's exactly what I wanted to explain. Thank you. Thank you.